In the vast darkness of space, a capsule remains stranded in low Earth orbit. No one knows how to bring it back, while astronauts are stuck on the ISS. This is the situation that Starliner astronauts are currently facing. A terrifying scenario like something out of a Hollywood sci-fi movie. But this is the present reality before us. After too many technical issues, NASA realized they needed a different solution to rescue their astronauts. So, what is the current status of the Starliner? Has NASA finally decided to choose SpaceX's Dragon to rescue with them? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. The cursed spacecraft Starliner seems to be getting worse. In fact, as we mentioned in our previous reports, NASA and Boeing officials were initially reluctant, even refusing, to use SpaceX's Dragon to rescue the astronaut Starliner sent to the ISS. They believe Starliner could safely return in any emergency situation. However, a recent action by NASA has dispelled this notion. NASA is indeed concerned about Starliner. On July 15th, NASA published a new document on the website fbds.gov. This study, titled Special Study for Emergency Response, is worth $266,000 and may be an amendment to the commercial crew contract. Although we don't know many details, it can be accurately speculated that NASA is exploring whether Crew Dragon can be quickly launched in an emergency. The results of this study will be very interesting. SpaceX may need to prepare for emergencies by 1. prioritizing the use of Dragon spacecraft and nearly refurbed Falcon 9 boosters, 2. quickly converting scheduled missions to emergency road, which could delay other missions, and 3. always keeping an empty Dragon spacecraft and a fueled Falcon 9 booster on standby at the launch pad. I don't mean to suggest that there's definitely a problem with Starliner, but it is a possibility, and what NASA has tasked SpaceX with is a contingency plan to avoid astronauts getting stranded on this space station in the future. So what do you think about this? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. All right, let's continue. In addition to NASA's latest move, Boeing engineers have also announced the completion of tests on the backup thrusters on the surface to identify the cause of the incident. However, in the joint meeting, we still haven't gotten any info about the return date of the two astronauts, indicating that the completion of ground tests has not yet yielded any effective results. Despite negative speculation in the space community, NASA officials remain very confident, in front of the media at least. We collected an incredible amount of data on the thruster that could help us better understand what's going on in flight, said NASA's commercial crew program manager Steve Stitch in a NASA update. Next, our teams moved into engine teardowns and inspections, which will provide additional insights as we analyze the results and evaluate next steps. The helium leaks seem to have caused several of the Starliner's thrusters to overheat, throwing its ability to navigate back to Earth in doubt. NASA, however, has maintained that Starliner would still be able to safely return Williams and Wilmore in case of an emergency. What we have found in this flight is that we fired the thrusters more than expected, and I would say more frequently, Stitch said in a statement last week. When I say frequently, I'm talking about how close you fire an individual thruster pulse next to the pulse of that thruster. What we're trying to do at White Sands is really replicating exactly what those pulses were that those thrusters saw, and then understanding the heating effects from those pulses, and then make sure there's no unintended consequences of the pulses, he added. Well, confidence is good, but let's hope everything goes as everyone wishes and that our beloved astronauts remain unharmed. I don't want to compare, but I gotta say, SpaceX's approach is truly worlds apart from what Boeing's doing. Instead of spending many years on theoretical models and computer simulations, SpaceX focuses on real-world testing and tackling the major issues. This method helps them identify problems early, like the faulty seal issue, whereas Boeing only discovered it after they already were up in space. The design of the Dragon spacecraft is also quite impressive. It can glide and fly upon re-entry into the atmosphere, rather than relying solely on heat shields and thrusters like traditional spacecraft. Elon frequently participates in the development process, encouraging the team to focus on important issues and not waste time on minor details until they become necessary during real-world testing. This way of working allows SpaceX to progress rapidly and achieve results at a much lower cost compared to competitors like Boeing. With this incident involving Starliner, Boeing and NASA are trying to make a positive impact by showing that they're testing the necessary systems for longer Starliner missions. But the project has already suffered several delays. Having originally been set to lift off for the first time with crew in 2017, this combined with the latest problems raises questions over the whole Starliner program. Starliner was noted as having a small helium leak before it even launched. Helium is an inert gas, meaning that it is very unreactive with other materials. 
This makes it ideal when coming into contact with rocket fuel in high temperatures, although producing it is a pretty expensive process. It's pressurized and used to push fuel into the engines at the correct rate. Helium leaks can mean that not enough fuel is going to reach a thruster. The leak spotted while Starliner was on the launch pad was determined to be negligible, and the spacecraft got sent to orbit regardless. However, this turned into a bigger problem when additional helium leaks were identified after launch, meaning that several of the spacecraft's small maneuvering thrusters could not be used. Four of the five thrusters have been repaired while Starliner has been docked to the ISS, but it raises the concern about other thrusters cutting out during the return journey to Earth. On Starliner's return, re-entering Earth's atmosphere requires a very specific angle of attack to ensure that there's not too much friction heating up the vessel. An inability to adjust the orientation of the craft or the orbital parameters for re-entry could, in the worst-case scenario, result in massive heat buildup and the destruction of the aircraft with two astronauts on board. Yikes! There are additional thrusters and other so-called redundancies, backup systems designed into the spacecraft. So, this is still a very unlikely scenario. However, so were the helium leaks. While Boeing and NASA have considered it safe to return on Starliner, it's perfectly conceivable that the astronauts might have some trepidation and anxiety, and rightfully so, especially as these issues didn't happen on the uncrewed test flights. The next particular problem is that Starliner returns and jettisons its service module on re-entry as it returns to the surface on land rather than at sea, like the Russian spacecraft Soyuz and SpaceX's Dragon capsules do. This means that the bit of the spacecraft with all the vital information on it is going to get burned up, making it very difficult to determine actually what went wrong. Currently, even though NASA and Boeing have done all the testing on their thrusters, there's still no confirmation about the true cause of the incident. What we'll be waiting for next is for them to complete the ongoing tests simultaneously on the ISS. The astronauts made it up to the ISS and are safe there. While it's likely that Starliner is going to return to Earth should a major fault be discovered while it's docked to the ISS, there are other return vehicles that can be used to ferry the two crew members safely back home. The astronauts' safety will no doubt be paramount in the minds of both the agency and the industry. But this is not the first problem with Starliner. The vehicle suffered major delays since its conception as part of the commercial crew program back in 2010. The contract indicated Starliner should be ready by 2017, with a two-year delay before the first successful unmanned launch in 2022. There was a failed attempt in 2019. The made crewed launch was then delayed by a month. These delays indicate Boeing is falling behind its major commercial competitor, SpaceX, which won a contract at the same time as Boeing did in 2010 to build vehicles that could transport the crew to the ISS. SpaceX successfully launched a crewed mission with the Dragon capsule in 2020. To give an indication of the success, Crew Dragon is currently completing its fifth manned mission to the ISS and has also done 30 cargo missions. Boeing's been a major player in space missions with NASA for decades, playing a huge role in their space shuttle program, for example. This relationship continues the company's role in the Space Launch System rocket that'll send astronauts on their way to the moon. The company's been one of the biggest and most admired contractors in the whole aerospace industry. However, these problems with Starliner come not long after widely publicized incidents with Boeing aircraft, so the corporation could do very well without any further problems with its spacecraft to add to its woes. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for checking it out and hope to see you back here next time. Bye.